Welcome to another edition of Mortgage Mondays. Today, we're talking about multiple offer situations because they're back. And to do that, we have with us a real estate expert from Remax Impact Realty, Moiz Rahman, the social savvy realtor. Welcome, Moiz. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for having me. It's actually a pleasure to be here, especially because the topic you're talking about is everywhere, right? And it's all over the news, it's all over different vlogs, uh, blogs and forums. And you're right, multiple offers are back, at a certain price point and it's simply because of supply and demand it's not as crazy as it once was in 2017 uh, everyone saw the market that was crazy as of right now we have a lot more buyers that want to purchase their first house so around six hundred thousand dollars or below and there's not enough inventory to give to everybody because all the homeowners are believing and they're thinking that if they put the house on the market during springtime it'll attract more buyers when in reality we have a bunch of hungry buyers for the new years and because of that because they're having way too many buyers on a single a property you're not seeing uh, multiple offers on a single property it's not as crazy of a bidding war as it once was but yes you now have some competition right and I wanted to ask you since I have you here what can our clients do what steps can they take to be better equipped to compete in multiple offers it's a great question first and foremost Louise make sure your clients are pre-approved Pre-approval is a must in this market. Number one, your clients need to know exactly what the bank is willing to give them in mortgage dollars. They need to know exactly how much down payment they have the capacity for. They also need to understand how much mortgage payments they're able to afford. We have to do your budgeting. We have to figure out exactly if you're able to afford the mortgage payments, the maintenance fees, the, the property taxes, and if you're still able to leave and live a good lifestyle after paying all these expenses. Right. So tell me this, Omer, uh, a little bit more detail, a little bit more intricate. Um, just because a buyer, a prospective buyer, has a pre-approval from you or any other bank for that matter of fact, does that mean that their deal is in stone and that they have the upper hand to go in firm or without a condition of finance or home inspection? That's a great question. The fact of the matter is, if your client is looking to go in firm on a property, they have to understand the risks involved with that. When we give you a pre-approval or the bank gives you a pre-approval, all we're looking at is your personal financial uh, spectrum. We're not looking at the property itself. But when you apply for the actual mortgage, the property is also underwritten. So think of it this way, right? We pre-approve someone for $500,000 in mortgage dollars. Everything is good. There's no issues. They bought the property for $500,000. But when the bank looks at the property, what if there's some issue with the property itself. What if there's asbestos on the property or some yeah. other challenge with the property that the bank doesn't like and then the bank doesn't approve the mortgage. And also another thing that, that uh, people have to be very cognizant of is, is multiple offer situations and going over asking price. Right, so right. think about it this way. If a property is listed for 800,000 and your client ends up buying it for 850,000, right? will this property appraise for that much money? Yeah. Because if it doesn't appraise, your client will have to come up with that money from their own resources, right? Yeah. So how can we protect them from doing that? Um, wow, okay, so, so many things, man, but really, really quickly, there's a huge difference between listing price and what a house actually sells for. A listing price is merely such a pricing strategy to get a house to sell quicker. Right. So whomever you are working with, if it's with me, it's a common practice. I've done it a hundred times. I know exactly how to guide my clients through this. Right. But your real estate agent, he or she needs to have the understanding of market value. If you take me to any city in the Durham region and you show me a house, I'll tell you how much it should be selling for. If somehow I don't know, I can access the area home sales report to pinpoint what the market value is. And I can give that to you then because then you're the buyer and then you can make your decision based off of whether this house is worth going extra for. And if you are going to go above market value you have to have the difference in cash at hand sure. and it's fine if you want to do that but you need to understand how much and you need to be guided towards that right just because a house is listed for three hundred thousand dollars doesn't mean it's worth three hundred thousand dollars if the nearby comparable sold for four hundred thousand that's the actual value three hundred thousand dollars listing price is merely just a strategy to get that four hundred thousand dollars but quicker so you need to have the right guidance for that. And if by chance you're falling short and your agent is unable to give that information to you, you need to go ask them to bring it out for them. Every agent has resources to get that info. In fact, so do you. If by chance your agent forgets, you as a buyer gotta take initiative, gotta take the diligence to go ask for that sold report, study it, and then make your decision. And that's vital. And that's pretty much where the whole term of work with your neighborhood expert comes from. 
Excellent. This is exactly why. Wow, excellent. There you have it, guys. Do your due diligence in this type of market. Make sure you're pre-approved. Work with an expert real estate agent like Moise when you're putting an offer on in this multiple offer situation. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.